Doc now. 248-356-1270. Doc Thompson. Doc Thompson on Talk Radio 1270 WXYT. Joining me now is Carrie Bentavaglio. Oh, Doc, wait a minute. I got, I'm sorry. I got the wrong I got the wrong line here. No, I'm sorry. Doc. Uh, Carrie Bentavaglio. No, we, they can't, they can't. Oh, he's not on? No, he, he he's canceled. Let me check line 17 because I think that was... No. No, he's not Doc, there. He's not going to... He, He's, oh. he's too, yeah, he said he was going to come on. Oh, he, I, I told you, though. He, and he called in, he, so he's he decided me, not to? No, he called me about 30 minutes ago and mm. said he, he All didn't. Right. Let me lay this out. So yesterday we talked about the, uh, the special primary. And I had talked about it well before the special primary when we were deciding if there was going to be a special primary to fill the remaining two months of the old 11th Congressional District before it turns into the new 11th Congressional District. Yes, indeed. And I mentioned that because we're having that election, it's costing the people of Michigan at least $650,000, and it could be more, in order to fill that seat for two months. About uh, 18 working days, as far as being Congress being in session, because it'll be at the end of the year from January 7th through, uh, or excuse me, from November 7th through January 1st. Yes, and for those 18 days or so of pay, it appears his he'll make about $2,200 per day of work. Now, I laid this entire thing out yesterday, and I said, first of all, it's the law that you have to have a special election. I find that frustrating, and maybe we should consider changing the law somehow, coming up with something new so this doesn't happen again. Number two, I blamed primarily Thad McCotter for bailing at the perfect time to set up this disaster of a waste of the better part of a million dollars in Michigan. I blame him for pretending all those years to be a public servant, then bailing and costing us a million dollars when he could have, even if he didn't show up to work, if he had just not resigned for another week or a couple of weeks, probably a month, and there wouldn't have been enough time to have this election. So Thad McCotter is the biggest scoundrel here. But... Everybody who threw their hat in the ring to get on the ballot for this less than, well, about two-month job in Congress are also, also culpable. They're also responsible in this. They could have stopped it. It's not even a job you would want for two months. It doesn't help their future political careers because they're going to be on the ballot November 6th, the same day that the new congressional 11th district will will serve to, or uh, try to find somebody to, to serve yeah. for, for two, two years. So it makes no sense other than the 30 plus thousand dollars they will make in salary. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I've said in the past, I will not support Thad McCotter and anything future that he does. He wants to run for future office. Politically, you're dead to me, Thad. And I said everyone else who who threw their hat in their ring, clearly showing that they are about themselves, not about serving their their fellow man, not about serving their neighbors, not about being a representative of the people. It's about them, their political careers, and maybe that two-month paycheck. It has to be about them, or they wouldn't have done it. So I've laid that entire thing out. Talked about it yesterday. Talked about Kerry Bentavaglio's win. I talked about the only 7% turnout for the primary. Supporting my claims that this is ridiculous. 7% of the people turned out. Meaning $17.77 or 73 cents per person who turned out is what we paid. Ridiculous. By the end of the show, Kerry Bentavaglio called in and wanted to set the record straight. I graciously offered him time, but I said we only have a couple of minutes left. So I let him express himself, said, why don't you call in today, whatever. Great, that sounds wonderful, whatever. He uh, told his story yesterday, and I will paraphrase and tell his story, that he, people went out and were getting the signatures for him for that, uh, for that run. Yes. And he got kind of caught up in it. Is that what it was? And he, he didn't want to tell those people who had gone out and spent time knocking on doors and getting signatures that he wasn't going to run. He didn't want to do that to the people who were working for him. So instead, it's worth a million dollars. Yes. Okay. Instead of saving right. his constituents nearly a million dollars, he didn't want to let down the people who had gathered signatures for him. So I said, well, 
Why don't we uh, wrap this up? I'll uh, get you on tomorrow. He agreed to that. I said, uh, let me ask you this. Would you be willing to give back part of your salary to, to not take your full salary in order to pay the people back? Because first of all, I think Thad McCotter should put up most of the money. And like I said, Kerry Bentvalio and the others, they are not the main culprit here. They'll, they're responsible for cumulatively. Thad McCotter is responsible for, I don't know, if 60% of this, 70% of this, something like that. Yeah. Everybody else cumulatively, the other 30, 40%. But maybe if he gave back part of his salary, explained it to the people, all right, maybe I could, um, depending upon how much it was, what else he had to say, maybe I could maybe I could get behind him. He told, said, hey, maybe that's not a bad idea. I'll have to think about that, right? I, I got the impression that he may actually yeah. consider that. In fact, even off the air right after, he said, you know, that, that's, a, that's a really good idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a look at that. Okay, so after we got off the air, uh, you then called him at about 20 after 6, quarter after 6, 10 after 6, something yeah, like I that. Yeah, I called him right after. He didn't immediately answer. I called, left a message hoping, hey, let's try to get you on for 4.05 tomorrow. Uh, give me a call back and confirm, and we'll set it all up. Okay, did he call you back? He did. Okay. I got a call about 6.40, about 20 minutes after I left the message. Message. Mm-hmm. Just a quick, hey, you know, that'll work. Then he, uh, uh, we ended up talking a little bit about the uh, possibilities of him donating some of his salary. Now, this is what I was thinking. And you tell me what you think. 248-356-1270. Kerry Bentevalio actually gets elected. Um, not just for the, the old 11th, but the new 11th. If he said, you know what? If I, I will give 20 maybe even only 10% of my salary, I might be able to get behind that. I'd like to see more just because it's such a gap. But like I said, he's not fully responsible for this. So a congressman makes about $175,000 a year, which means if uh, for two years, if he got elected to the, you know, the new 11th, that would be about 17, if you 10% would be 17,500, $17,500 a year. Two years in a row, that's uh, $35,000. $650,000 is what the, the minimum that the state of Michigan is going to waste on that special primary. Well, he's not mainly responsible. He would put 35000 into the kitty, right? Maybe if the other candidates were willing to do the same thing, you start adding that up. What were there, seven? Yeah. So now you're talking... Definitely add up. Right, you're talking $250,000 roughly? It's going a long way to put a dent in that. Right. Then of the remaining four or $500,000 from Thad McCotter, that plays out about right mm-hmm. for, for, for their what I believe is their culpability in this, this fraud, this charade, this outrageous thing from going on. That would be about right, even... Even 10%. 20% would be definitely. So I'm like, well, maybe I could do it. That would show that he's serious. Um, you, you talked to him off the air last night, and uh, what did he end up uh, saying about that? He told me that he would consider uh, uh-huh. over the first uh, six weeks, that six-week special he term, that he would, uh, he would go ahead and give uh, a portion of that, possibly would consider for that first uh, a six-week term. You mean for the, for the old... District. For the old eleven, yes, he would he would give a portion of that salary, assuming he did win, to serve uh, the remaining term for the old eleven. What, what about the new eleven? He said no. Okay, wait, wait a minute. So he would consider Carrie Benvalio would consider giving a portion of that two month salary. Yes. Consider. Yes. That's not definite. No. A portion. Yes. Well, let's see here. What do you think most people would consider a reasonable, like I said, 10 or 20% when I was talking the whole yeah. thing. So let's say, let's say he was willing to give 20% of that two-month salary. Now, that two-month salary is about $30,000. He's willing to consider yes. giving 6% or, or $6,000 back? Willing to consider giving $6,000 Meanwhile, the state of Michigan, Michiganders are responsible for over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yes. So his six thousand, if it was twenty percent, which I think would be pretty high for most people, twenty mm-hmm. percent of their salary. If it were twenty percent, then we would have only wasted three hundred and forty-two thousand yes. dollars on the election. Yes. And he's willing to consider that. He'll think about it. 
That doesn't sound very committal. No. And it also sounds like a very low number. Yes. Now, what about uh, the the new eleventh? Would he wouldn't consider it for two years? He said no. He said he he couldn't he couldn't do that. Why 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 couldn't he do that? Well, well he he did resign his job as a teacher earlier this year. And right. So he hasn't had an income since then. He has been living off of off of savings. You know. Plus, uh, wait a minute, Con- congressmen make. One hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars a yeah, year. Yeah, but you know he's he's not seeing any of that yet. You know he hasn't he hasn't been elected yet, and he said he'd give some of that special of the of the, of the special term because of the special election. But uh, he he wouldn't be able to do the. Uh, he couldn't uh, give ten percent. No, think, think about this: ten percent of one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars is seventeen five. Yes. Okay, that means he's still going to make uh, 158 Thereabouts. Well, see, he says there's going to be some more expenses just because he's going to be a congressman. So he couldn't live on a hundred and fit. Well, I'll even give him the benefit of the doubt. A hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars. That's that's too low well, for see, him. Well, see, he's saying though that I mean it's really not going to be a hundred and fifty. He well, for instance, he's going to have to replace one of his vehicles. He's going to have to get a new car. He's going to need to get a new car. Wait a minute, I, I need a new car. We all need new cars. We all have expenses. Well, but see, that's not it, though. See, How much is the car? I, well, you can get a cheap one. for. You can buy one for three fifty a month. Don't muddle this up with the facts, Doc. Um, see, he also went on to say that... Wait, 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 wait. Hang on a second before we move on. So he couldn't live on 155000 because he has to get a new car. And what is that? I just said you can get a decent car for three fifty four hundred a month. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say... Six thousand dollars on a car. Okay, well, so he couldn't live on a, a hundred and forty. Well, but see, two thousand dollars. It's still not going to be one hundred and forty because see, he's he's going to have to get a studio apartment in Washington. Also, he says that's going to be about three thousand a month. Okay, um, it, DC can be expensive if he's yeah. willing to drive in and live in like Front Royal or Virginia or somewhere out in uh, whatever. No, it no, he, be as much. He's going to be in DC. All right, um, you know there are congressmen who sleep in their office. Right. See, that's actually what he had, he had brought that up too for the first uh, for the first six weeks. If he was elected, that would give some money back. He he'd be willing to sleep in his office. You know, uh, 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 Chaffetz, Congressman Chaffetz does. Paul Ryan has done that uh-huh. as well. Yeah. In order to save expenses, they sleep in their office. See, there's there's still some more expenses we haven't gotten to yet, though. Well, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. He's not willing to sleep in it. You know, when you sleep in your office, that encourages you to be back in the district more, mm-hmm. serving the constituents. Yeah. Okay, so he needs that. So three thousand dollars a month. That's uh, $36,000 $36, a year. A year. Yeah. So now he's got, as I said, it was hundred and over 140. But yes. we'll just level it off and say 100000 So he can't live off of the 100000 Well, But see, then he's, he's also making the point that uh, apparently the congressional office will only pay for one flight back to the district per month. So he's estimating he'll wait probably... Minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so yeah, you need to fly. How often are you flying? Twice a month? Three times a month? He says, I mean, he, he loves his wife and loves his family, and he, he's going to want to be back and be in the district and, and see the people. So he's estimating the cost of flights to be about $1,000 a month, which brings down to the real number that he gave me, about 90000 a year. And, and his words, his direct quote is that his wife would kill him if he gave any of that away. So with all of his expenses, he's only going to be bringing in ninety thousand dollars a year. He'll only be taking home about ninety thousand a year. W- was he making ninety thousand dollars a year as a teacher? I would guess no. Hmm. In fact, I, I can say no. Um. Do uh, Do most people in Michigan make ninety thousand dollars a no, year? No. Jamie, um, you make ninety thousand dollars a year. Would uh, right? You You make? Um. No. Not even close. No. Not Did- even half that. So could you live off of off of let, let's say I take twenty percent of that seventy thousand okay. okay could could you could you struggle and get by on seventy thousand dollars a year I I definitely could huh Skip, I think could, I could make it Skip could you struggle and get by on seventy thousand dollars a year <sighs> You know it, it it would be tough but I I'd find a way to make it work You know the average American makes uh, now around those that actually have a job around forty thousand dollars a year, and they have expenses and and whatever. I I don't make ninety thousand dollars a year. Mm. I mean, you've heard the show. Um, I I don't make ninety thousand dollars a year, Um, and uh, I have. Keep in mind, he's he's worried about only making ninety thousand after he has to get that separate apartment, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I don't make ninety thousand dollars a year, and I have to pay for three houses right now. Yeah. 
I'm, I, I have no money left because, unfortunately, I have a house I can't sell in Virginia right now because of the bad economy. And I have to pay for my apartment and I have to pay for my wife's apartment who lives in Dayton right now because of her job. Mm-hmm. And you know what we do? We, uh, we don't eat out and we don't go to movies and I don't have cable and she doesn't have cable. And I have a car that should have been retired three years ago. These are the things you do. That, that's what you do. But $90,000 a year would be uh, pretty rough for oh, Terry Bentivoglio. Yeah. My wife would kill me if I gave any of that away. That is a direct quote from the man that wants to be the uh, Congress of the 11th District. See, this is, um, this is a little surprising to me because uh, for most people that are, like I said, Tea Party goers, and I have spoken and been a part of the Tea Party movement. I've been at Tea Party events all over the country Florida, uh, the Carolinas, Virginia, Maryland, Ohio, Michigan, all over the place. And uh, the, the idea is personal responsibility, personal freedom, smaller government, smarter government. These are, these are you know, ongoing themes. And uh, yet, Kerry, from what he's saying, Kerry Bentavaglio is not that person. No. That, that's what this adds up to. Mm-hmm. The numbers I just laid out, his argument... The fact that he would continue to seek a, a that the the two months of that you know defunct eleventh congressional district for not even any political game it's not even smart just costing the taxpayers money and then when I give him the opportunity to to try to turn it around to show that he's that person that believes in those things uh-huh. yeah I can't do it maybe six thousand dollars maybe my, my wife would kill me literally possibly. <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden. Thank you. Thank you. That I listen, that's this is the reason. I gave Kerry Bentavaglio the the benefit of the doubt yesterday. I was willing to hear him out. I was willing to see if he was really that person that has those convictions and believes in that. But so far he's just shown me that he is the typical politician. That he is just the typical dirtbag politician that's in it for themselves, in it for the dollars, in it for the power, in it for their career. That's how this is shaped up. You know, before he called yesterday, I already had an image of him. He didn't help his image. He solidified that image of being the typical politician who's in it for themselves. And then not even man enough to come on today after agreeing to come on. How did you guys leave that? How did you leave that? Skip's my producer. How did you guys leave it? He said he had a scheduling conflict. He said if there's any way we No, could... last night. How did, what did he say there last night? Oh, he said he's good to go for 405. In fact, he actually had asked... <laughs> there's more to the story. He actually had asked me if I could give him a call at around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock, preceding us going onto the air, to remind him. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a minute. What? I, 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 that slipped my mind. That was another part. He had asked uh, if, if he wouldn't mind if... I could please give him a call an hour or two before to remind him, and he would make sure to be there for us. A reminder call? A remind, and he. I, I left him a message. I, I called him at uh, two. In fact, here, let me two thirty-seven before we were going on the air. Said, "Hey, Carrie, it's Skip, the Doc Thompson show. Just wanted to confirm you'll be on at four oh five. Please give me a call back." And he said it was a reminder. It was yes. spoke, but a reminder. A reminder. And you reminded him, and then he called you and got back at 3.15, mm-hmm. saying, no, I can't oh, do it. Oh, I have a, con- a scheduling conflict. You know what that scheduling conflict was? Hmm. Um, the scheduling conflict is, yeah, I don't want to uh, actually be criticized. I, don't, I want to just fly under the radar and not have my inadequacies uh, and the fact that I'm not, you know, really of those values that I say I am to be exposed. I don't, that's a scheduling conflict. Apparently. Yeah, I, I don't know. So let me, let me understand this. A man who is asking you to vote for him, to represent you as a United States congressman, to serve in the United States Congress that, that makes votes that passes legislation, considers legislation daily when they're in session that affects every aspect of your life. From whether or not we go to war and your sons and daughters get killed or put in harm's way. Things like the economy, whether or not you're going to have a job, whether or not there's going to be rules and regulations in place that stop people from from starting businesses. A, A job that requires 
consideration and possible votes on things like taxes and health care and abortion and religion, every aspect of your life. He needs a reminder about appointments. They have this uh, this thing. In fact, uh, well, maybe we could help him out here, Skip. They have this thing called a calendar. Um, but uh, it's it's a day planner. I'm sorry, calendar. say that word again. A calendar. 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 It goes day by day, and then okay. you know, under each day, it tells you what day of the week it is. Um, you can get some calendars that are called day planners, and they have. Oh, certain I'm, sorry, t- I'm sorry. A day planner. Day planner. Day planner. Okay. A little piece of paper, and I what can a, plan your plan, you plan your, day? your day. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. So like, what if it says 4:05, and you see Doc you Thompson interview, and you write it down? Oh, and man. they have this thing called a um, a clock. Oh. Uh, they also have a thing called a watch. You can actually tell, tell the time. Tell what time it is. Some of them have little um, alarms. No. That you could. Doot, 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 doot. What? To, oh, it's three thirty. Time for me to go get something neat. Time for me to go to that meeting. Time for me to call that radio show where mm. I said I would uh, agree to be interviewed. That's uh, that's crazy. So I'm thinking maybe we could get a day planner and send it over to Carrie. No. I get- because uh, you know if he gets elected, I want to make sure he's actually aware that there are votes going on. Ooh. To make sure that he can actually make it to the floor to cast his vote. That's a good idea. Darn it. Wait a minute. They they had that vote on going to war. Why didn't somebody tell me about this? So I wonder if the sergeant at arms of uh, the House of Representatives, do, do they give calls to let you know that uh, there's a little vote going on? Don't forget, 4 o'clock today. Don't forget. I'm guessing no. Would his staff members do that? Is that what they would probably I, do then? They would need to, I'm You guessing. can't remember something so basic and you want to be a congressman? I don't want you to be my mailman. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't want you around at all. If you can't take care of the most basic things in life to make an appointment without a reminder from the person you've scheduled the appointment with, can you imagine Carrie Bentavaglio in a big meeting with corporate titans about things that are going to happen in America's future, and he says, oh, sorry, Mr. CEO, can you... Can you call me about an hour before the meeting so I can remember to meet you? Yeah, I'll meet you on the 7th, but can you call me like an hour out? Doc, in all fairness, you generally do give me a quick call before the show starts. Just No, to I sure. don't. Oh, that's in right. fact, if I have to, you're not going to be working here. I'm sorry. So I have to actually remember to come here yes. and do my job each day. Yes, it's called being a responsible adult. Hmm. Well, these are the most basic things. Two four eight three five six twelve seventy. Chad and Lavoni, you're on Talk Radio twelve seventy. I, I gotta guess why he wouldn't want to come on if he had to stay on hold as long as I did. That might have been a factor. Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, That's Chad. Right. It does joke, happen. Man, sorry. <clears throat> um, so, um, no, I I can understand your frustration, especially about the election. I know I was ticked off. A whole bunch of uh, Benavolio supporters were angry that they would even do that special election. Um, especially because he was the only person on the ballot before that time. And um, I I can understand what you're saying a little bit, if he was the only person and he decided to put his name on. But honestly, there were four other people there, and he's trying to run an election. So the reality is, if somebody else who is a no-name gets on there and wins the special election for the 11th District, it takes momentum away from his campaign. No, it doesn't. And the election's on the same day. I know, but the, the person who would be in Congress, there, some other Republican, like, for instance, Nancy Cassis, who right. lost right. in the primary, would then be the fill-in if, if for some reason there had been a high Democrat turnout in order to undermine Kerry's support or other things like that. It, it just looks negatively if he didn't win both of those primaries. And it's unfortunate they had to happen. But in, in terms of his election strategy, it would have made less sense for him to not run at all. No, it, it, the, no, no, Chad, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't buy that at all. The election's on the same day. I, I'm serious. I don't. What, it, it, they're not even the same district. I mean, it's the new 11th, which means it's going to be redrawn. That's part of the problem. So to say you're going to lose momentum, I, I don't see that at all. That that's really grasping at straws, and it's certainly it's largely the same. Well, portions of it, but there's also new portions, and there's portions that are going away. 
I right. mean, it's it, the, the bottom line is, is that worth $650,000? And if Kerry Bentivaglio no, is somebody not, who not believes not in the, the Tea Party no, and, ideas... And, and, there's, and there's aspects of what you're saying that I agree with. And, I, I, and the thing is, is the, I, while I'm arguing for his policies mm-hmm. and other things that he's in favor of, I obviously don't know him that well as a person, and um, I, I, I believe he's an honorable guy, but I, at the same time... Well, here let, let's say for a second. Defend every single. No, no, I understand that, Chad. I'm just uh, let me let me let me let's say for a second you're right. Let's say for a second that it absolutely does affect his election strategy because you'd have, you know, my producer Skip, for example, getting the nomination for the old 11th, and then he's on the ballot of having won the primary for the new 11th. Right? Let's say you're absolutely right that that throws it off. I'm still at a point, and maybe I'm alone here, but I'm still at a point that I want politicians to say. What's right is right, what's wrong is wrong, and I'm willing to put that, the people, the tax dollars, and what's right above my campaign and above what I do. Even if you're right on that, that's what I'm ready for, that's what I demand now. And that's the reason I call out Romney, I call out Obama, I call out all of them when they are wrong and they put themselves above the tax dollars and the people when they put themselves above freedom. That's just how I see it. Now, I don't know uh, Kerry at all. I don't know him. I've never met him. He might be a great guy. If you had asked me that yesterday at 6 o'clock, I would have said, he seems like he's probably an honorable person. He seems like, you know, um, he did the wrong thing here. Could it be forgiven? Is he willing to donate? But um, now, having bailed on this, knowing that he couldn't simply answer the tough questions, knowing that he wouldn't be willing to give back any of his salary because he can't live on $90,000 a year, when there's plenty of people in Michigan who've worked their entire life that don't have a job right now, or those that do have taken jobs where they're only making $30,000 a year now, and you can't give back. I didn't even lay all of the blame on him for this. I said he is responsible for one sixth or seventh of about 40% of this. The rest is on Thad McCotter. But Kerry can't even step up, admit that wrongdoing, try to correct that wrong. That's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. That is what I demand now. And if you can't feel that, so be it. And if you want to support Kerry and you don't want that standard, so be it. Good. But me, this show, what I believe... I'm holding their feet to the fire. I'm holding them to the standard. And, and in fairness, too, full disclosure, after he had told me today that he was not going to be able to make it and he uh, uh, had a meeting he couldn't get out of, he asked if he could reschedule it. I told him we could possibly take a look at Tuesday at 4.05, but to be honest, if, if he doesn't call and remind me, I don't know if I'm going to remember it. You don't know if you're going to remember I, it? He might need to remind me. Did you tell him that? Why don't you text him and say, remind me, and we'll have you on at 4.05. Doug Thompson.